Alton Talks, a space where our experts share their experiences and industry insights with you. Welcome to Alton Talks, our brand new podcast in which we will be discussing industry trends, projects, challenges and more with some of our experts. In today's episode, we will be focusing on our IT division and I'm really excited to see what everyone has to share. My name is Sarah and I'm here with Yuri Berg, Senior Manager, Branko Perisha, Experienced PM, Veronica Cicceri, also Senior Manager, and Sebastiano Trambetta, Senior Technical Manager. Please introduce yourself. My name is Sebastiano Trombetta. I am a Senior Technical Manager at Alton, and I'm responsible for every software development project. Hi everybody, I'm Veronica Cicceri, I'm a Senior Manager at Alten, and I gain my experience mainly in the fintech industry. Hi, I'm Branco Parisa. I'm actually since June as a consultant by uh, Alten as a Senior Program Manager. My name is Yuri Berg and I'm working in Alten in the IT division covering fintechs, banking and insurance sectors. Thank you very much everyone. Let's dive right into it. So. Alton is a digitalization and IT leading actor worldwide with its talents in the heart of their experience. They provide a wide range of services, fostering the digital transformation of their clients. Therefore, you're actually shaping their future, right? Whether it is in the automotive, telecom, financial or energy sector, Alton supports every industry with their tailored solutions. Now, IT is an ever-changing sector that is moving so fast and it's also such a broad subject. So in your expert opinions, what would you think are the latest trends in the sector and also how are or will they be affecting your jobs in your specific industry. Sebastiano, would you like to go first? Thank you, sorry, it's an interesting question. Uh, analysts uh, have uh, talked about uh, several trends for 2023 and the years uh, uh, in the future, and it's very interesting to talk about the future just because we, uh, we, const we construct the, the road for, for, our, for our growth. Um, uh, so far, um, based on my studies, uh, uh, analysts uh, um, identify three main areas. Mm -hmm. uh, the one is uh, about the optimize, uh, which means uh, essentially optimize IT systems for, uh, to be more resilient. Uh, the second one is about to scale, just to uh, increase the capacity of the IT systems and also to uh, increase the pace for uh, product delivery. Uh, and the third one is the pioneer. Pioneer means, uh, I'd say, it's the future, no? Uh, we talk about probably three, five years in the future and we talk about uh, what uh, uh, the technology and the process will enable our uh, capacity to, uh, to, uh, to increase uh, uh, the, the growth factor uh, leveraging new technologies. Uh, and the, the fourth, uh, it's, uh, it's like uh, the, the baseline, it's a sustain sustainability. Okay, the capacity to be uh, green uh, and in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the context of the world. Okay. Veronica, I understand that you have been working for Alton for kind of a long time. What is your perspective on the latest trends in the sector? Regarding the fintech, uh, we, we will see different trends. Uh, I would like, to, of course, the most important ones. So the first one uh, is the uh, raising of the embedded finance or the inclusive finance. Uh, that means that we will see even more often collaboration between uh, banks, the traditional banks and the fintech companies. Why? Because there is the need to approach uh, a new customer base, especially in the, in the emerging market that has different needs uh, in comparison to the developed countries. 
and this creates, uh, of course, uh, 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 a need to use uh, new technologies uh, and uh, to see new uh, synergies. And um, even more regarding the, the fintech, we see that this year was a really a difficult year for the fintech because we have seen the collapse uh, of some uh, cryptocurrency uh, companies. What does it mean? It means that we need to focus even more on the transparency on, and uh, on the customer protection. Mm -hmm. That is something that uh, hasn't been done before and now is becoming even more crucial because uh, we need to regain the trust uh, of the people in, uh, in these technologies. And then just to remain uh, more, uh, let's say, linked to the to what we we can read uh, in on every newspapers we are talking about a reception uh, we are talking about a recession that could last two years uh, and this brings uh, of course uh, a need to uh, take control on the cost on the budget on the company spendings so Yuri when you hear uh, this you have a different let's say approach to the to the whole thing even though it's the same the same sector correct what are your thoughts i think it's uh, very good that we make the transition right now because i'm actually coming from the banking and insurance industry mm -hmm. so what veronica has mentioned uh, has a lot to do with how i felt many many years uh, i spent around 10 years in the banking and insurance industry so i saw how the industry is actually transforming so when we talk about it uh, there are always people behind who actually been transformed who've been taught new skills have to keep uh, themselves up to date and um, just to connect to the points of Veronica is um, it's absolutely right that the merge between the old banking and the fintechs is really happening. Um, I'm ha holding a card of a bank which has no physical presence and I'm still believing the bank. Uh, never saw the bank and I'm still happy with the services especially with the fees obviously. Um, talking about the cost factor and um, I think that in the future, and that's what we also experience, bankers would have, um, banks would not really necessarily need bankers. They would need IT people who understand banking processes and banking products. And that's something which is very exciting for me as an ex-banker, to dive into the IT world where my understanding of the finance and banking uh, comes together hand in hand with IT technologies, which Sebastiano mentioned before. So actually, are we, are we already talking about kind of a resilience that you already mentioned? Maybe it already goes to the di uh, into the direction of sustainability, but on an humane level? Um, I think if you talk about sustainability in general, um, the topic before uh, recent crises and uh, some ongoing uh, conflicts in Europe, it was a very important point. Uh, a lot of investment went there. Um, I'll get a bit technical, during the very low interest rates, um, this topic got much more focus. Right now it's a bit less. But nevertheless, a lot of people understand the uh, importance of sustainable investments. A lot of banks use it as their USP. Um, and a lot of fintechs use this as a USP because they attract younger generations who are more aware of that. So this is something which creates a certain trend for the future which I think um, even the biggest players uh, in the banking or insurance cannot really ignore anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we have a very interesting times uh, before us and um, I'm looking forward to be the contributor to it. Absolutely, thank you for that. Does that for you imply that a concept that is actually enforcing efficiency, and I think efficiency is a keyword, we will get to you of course, but efficiency is a keyword, right? Yes. Does that automatically imply sustain sustainability or not? Efficiency cannot exist uh, without sustainability in the long term. Otherwise, it's not efficiency. Yeah, correct. I think it's a, yeah, it's a good position. Um, uh, we live in a post-pandemic world and what will uh, the, let's say what we'll expect uh, in the future is uh, it's not only to uh, uh, to to live with such thing uh, now we will live in the past but also we need uh, to uh, to face uh, with uh, 
uh, uh, lack of energy, just because, uh, let's say, we, we are seeing uh, this in, in Europe uh, with the, um, the cyber security threat, but also it's very important for us, the lack of skills, just because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have uh, uh, dramatically uh, need for technical people, mm -hmm. uh, just because uh, uh, this is the heart, the heart no, of, our, of our world today. Absolutely correct, and it's something that uh, me and Yuri, unfortunately, we, we experience daily. That there is a shortage of skills in this moment, uh, even because uh, we need talents that are really uh, expert on the new technologies. As we said before, there are customers that has new needs, mm. so uh, we need new technologies, new approaches, and for this we need uh, skills. Interesting. I'll dive deeper into that in a bit. The trend, the, now you completed the latest trends for this round with AI, is that correct? I actually address challenges which are, uh, we will look at it. Mm -hmm. We will look at uh, challenges in the next three to five years. We are looking already to these challenges. Mm -hmm. I had the privilege to already to look at these challenges, but actually to see uh, possible scenarios uh, on the Oxford University. And that's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's actually motivated, uh, always motivated me and still to help young people as you, to help with my experience a little bit and mean, uh, with my curiosity. How can we ever actually solve these challenges? I can speak mm -hmm. about these challenges immediately or later, but there will be challenges. It's uh, maybe just three words. And uh, on the Oxford, actually, they name it fourth uh, industrial revolution. And you, we will think about that. I will sure, maybe not me, I will play tennis in a few years, but you guys <laughs> for sure, um, about that. And that's interesting. That's challenging. That's uh, daily business for, for us. It's really interesting. And I think maybe also we find a common challenge or, or trend that is actually now being seen all of a sudden, where are the resources, like in, like in where are the people that can actually also handle that, right? right? Okay, very interesting, thank you. So we talked about the trends and you already started talking about challenges and that is super interesting to <laughs> okay. me. So yeah, let's say maybe for the next five years, where do you see the main challenges? Sebastian? Yeah, I'm quite agree with uh, with Branco just because in the future we have uh, probably the same challenge we have today uh, which means essentially security you know, uh, find the right people uh, just because uh, we say uh, we are seeing uh, in this moment that the, uh, the uh, let's say, the people that do not reach the technology probably in the right way. They, they, they use it as, as a user, but not as a uh, scientist or um, someone who works with the in the technology field. So, um, we'll face probably um, with the, um, uh, the new threat, which means uh, essentially a new find, new way to to break uh, the technology we put on the, on the field, and uh, the new way to to reach out new customer, new user. That's uh, what we uh, talked uh, before with uh, with uh, Veronica. Um, we see clearly in the trends, uh, as I mentioned before. Um, in the post-pandemic world, um, we uh, change the, the way we see the world. Uh, just because, for example, uh, now the remote working is more common, uh, especially in the Western uh, uh, countries. Um, we, uh, we want to use uh, 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 even more apps, uh, simple, um, we want to do a lot of things using a simple app. Uh, we don't want to go to the bank for for creating uh, for for uh, let's say 
uh, the stuff we do in the bank uh, usually. Uh, this means that our, pro our approach with the technology will change and we need to be prepared for such challenges. That's Is that point. even foreseeable? Um, I Is think it possible? I think, uh, if I may, um, I could actually jump on this point from Sebastiano. And um, it's uh, within, as an, I have to use this uh, popular joke back in the day, when, you, when I was a banker, I was necessarily, I had to dress with the tie and go to the office, right? Uh, and then when the pandemics happened, I could do the same wearing um, whatever, whatever I want, more or less. Your working, pajama. Uh, my pajama, <laughs> for example. Now, uh, this happened within a lifespan of, let's say, three, four years. Uh, the industry is existing since, banking is since thousands of years, right? So how quickly this changed, then it will just um, speed up the whole uh, spiral of, of the change. And uh, talking about the trend and the challenges, uh, so to say, getting back to your question, mm -hmm. The main challenge would be um, if the spiral is going so quickly, are we able and willing, um, it's more I think on the willing, to re-educate ourselves in the same pace? Uh, which would inevitably go to the question, um, is my knowledge from university or course will be enough for the next three, five, seven or ten years, or maybe half a year? Um, there are many statistics saying that uh, once I finish the third year of university, my knowledge of the first year becoming irrelevant. So in this situation, you have to have, um, we are fighting for the people, obviously. Um, we need to have um, the biggest and most brightest talent, not for today, but also in six months, in 12 months. Because the skill set is changing so dramatically, and uh, AI is also a very big uh, threat here, obviously. And if we um, manage the challenge, we could use the AI to help the people get the learning curve um, under control and not to lose themselves to the technology. Uh, this, all those horror movies which we see, right? About how the future and technology will turn the technology from servant to the, turn us to the slave. We don't want this to happen. So we have to be clever enough to see where it's going, control it well, um, so a lot of ethical questions with the AI is coming to play with uh, self-driving uh, cars and also with the um, data of the banks. Um, if the bank knows exactly uh, where I was on Friday nights, uh, what it is, um, did they uh, over party or um, it could use predictive tools, predictive analytics tools um, to maybe then connect to my insurance and say, okay, maybe Yuri needs a certain product. Uh, He's maybe bored over the weekend, let's say. He wants, uh, or maybe if I bought something on the weekend, um, which is, let's say I like sports, right? And if I do more sports, probability of me getting injury uh, is a bit higher, obviously. So the insurance company could come and play, hey, you already bought a new bicycle. Great, would you like to have it insured? And maybe you want yourself to get insured. This is something which is at the moment is not happening, but the data is in the banks, the data is in the database. This is something which is very interesting. It will require uh, a lot of new laws on um, data protection and data management, how the data would be um, eventually stored, where, um, who is able to process it, and how would that be, uh, bottom line, monetized. And those who could do this, um, the front runners, um, and it might not be coming from banking or insurance, uh, the, the biggest uh, owner of our data is uh, our mobile phones. They even know where we are at every second moment. So those operational systems used in this iOS and Android, they know more about me than sometimes I know about myself. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. So Veronica, is AI the solution to the trend and challenge that you foreseen? For sure, it could be the answer to a need that uh, uh, we are seeing, especially in the latest generation, like mm -hmm. the Generation Z, that is the need of speed and real time. Uh, we are seeing that uh, the, the people of the Generation Z need and want information right here and right now. And uh, this is something that, of course, the customer has uh, have to take into account and that, uh, from their point of view, shorten even more the time to market. Force them to have a really short time to market from one side and from the other side they have to build uh, 
solution that can connect to each other. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the example that, uh, that Yuri brought before. Great, thank you. Well, I would like to know a bit more about your own experiences and what you do. Like, for example, is there a, any project that has impacted you the most as an IT professional? Yes, I have a good example. Please. Um, when I started in Alton, I started in the banking industry, in the payment industry, and after uh, a couple of years, I had the, the, the chance and the opportunity to start working in the fintech, opening uh, a really big account that is one of the most important fintech in the, in the banking industry. And uh, let me say that it was an interesting and long journey because uh, we really started from scratch, giving some services, and then uh, we go through becoming preferred supplier, and now we are supporting them uh, in their journey to become a multinational company. And uh, this is really amazing because uh, I saw uh, really how to start to become a real partner for, for our customer, how to support in them, not only in the small services, but even in the most added value activities. That's amazing. So actually, is, is the, the thing that added the most value about it that you were able to accompany from scratch or Absolutely. what was it? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we work together to put processes uh, in place. Uh, uh, we work together to gain the trust of the line manager in us and to let them understand how we could support them. And uh, now we are working with them uh, in order to address uh, other markets. And uh, this is uh, so amazing and I'm really proud of, uh, of this experience. Yeah, you should be. It sounds like a huge transformation for yes. all, all, everyone who was involved. Exactly. That's really exactly. nice. Good to hear. Anyone wants to share a project that has impacted them? Maybe I'll have another one to Please. follow up. Uh, also coming from the banking and finance industry. As uh, Veronica correctly pointed out before, every uh, major or even minor change um, in the banking system, in the insurances, it creates a lot of potential risks. So a lot of tests have to be performed. And some of the tests are better performed, not live, but in a, a virtual environment, so to say, so-called synthetic data have to be used. They have to be created and then used to see if the system operates well, if there are potential bugs coming or not, um, before the actual system or update could go live. And that's something interesting because um, I had a experience with some of the banking institutions working in this area and uh, I start to see and um, actually value how Alton could uh, help those companies, how Alton could support them with providing uh, test engineers uh, with the know-how that help those companies deliver those changes on time, on budget and of course uh, it's always a matter of quality and so uh, the standards here are very very high, there is no room for failure and uh, it creates also a very high bar for people working at Alton, so they have to keep themselves always uh, up to date and uh, constantly learning. Uh, that's the point we already touched before. And uh, maybe another example which is um, again connected more to banking. Um, as I said before, there is a very interesting merge between people with financial knowledge and IT knowledge. Uh, normally you would see just an IT person or just uh, a banking person, right? Mm -hmm. Right now there is such a merge that a person creating some financial product, products. Um, we saw it with the crypto, uh, for example, yeah. right? If you tokenize or create certain, um, certain virtual, let's put it that way, currencies, um, and you make um, derivative products on, on it, right? So how exactly would you price it? How the trading would look like? Because those things are deep inside very mathematical, and I think none of the only IT or only finance people would be able to understand that only a combination of the two could see what potentially could happen. And that's something which before all this technological advancement, it was not really on the table, the topic. Right now, there are new fields and applications of this knowledge. And that's something which, uh, we addressed this before, you have to really combine um, different people with different backgrounds and uh, not always easy to find, but then you have to teach them on the job or give them enough 
uh, room to actually make the trial and error before it starts to operate. So far from my side. I really like that. It, it seems to me that the change of perspective was like a life experience for you. It's uh, truly so because in a way, um, talking about sustainability as well, at some stage you reach the level where you want to um, put in some talents into practice and make an impact. Something which you could be proud of, uh, of your product or your advancement, right? Like for example, if you are if you're working on some technology which uh, turns to be revolutionary in the end, uh, this is really something very interesting and it keeps your mind alive. Uh, this is really, it keeps it uh, developing hopefully as quickly as AI. At least. Um, <laughs> and, um, this is something which is, I think, uh, especially for the uh, newer generations, people who are very uh, curious, sometimes they want to create something they don't know yet what, um, all those talents and um, different perspectives come together. So it's incredible to see the merge of the technology and the banking world. Great, thank you. Uh, if I may connect Please, to what uh, Yuri said uh, regarding the, the virtual space, just because we talk about uh, you know, uh, virtual uh, currency, virtual everything uh, nowadays. In my experience, uh, I worked for um, an important, one of the most important uh, fashion firm worldwide, uh, uh, thanks to, to Alten, um, uh, um, creating a virtual showroom. Uh, we are talking about, uh, it's a project in the metaverse, so it's uh, so-called now. And, and it was amazing, just because uh, for the new generation, but also for, 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 for the current, for, 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 for the generation like me, um, have the possibility to uh, go really into a shop uh, if, uh, uh, on the other side of the world uh, and you can get uh, the, the product, uh, the, the customer sell, it's amazing. Just because you are there. Uh, regarding, uh, let's say, uh, the possibility to, um, uh, to see uh, the, 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 the texture, the color, the, the different model, the virtual space become, becomes a real a reality now. It's not more anymore virtual. Uh, this is uh, what we call in the technologies. We we say the augmented reality or the virtual reality. No, it's uh, uh, we put together the reality and the virtual space, and that's that, that's amazing, in my opinion. Absolutely, it sounds like future is here. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, to be in uh, some movies uh, where you yeah, exactly. can shop, can, can shop uh, in pyjama, just to remember uh, exactly. uh, Yuri. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a new opportunity. It's uh, something that the new generation wants to, mm -hmm. just because for them it's, it's, uh, or it's common. Mm -hmm. It's not something uh, you know, uh, futuristic. It's a, it's a reality. How interesting. Yeah, it Branko. is. Has there been a project I that has a impacted? Story. <laughs> terrible story is actually, let's travel to the past. Uh, a few years ago, actually, I wasn't at Alten, of course, obvious. I wasn't in, in financial industry. I was in industry, so big concern, 200,000 people. And I was consultant again <laughs> from the beginning. And actually, uh, I was on the cutting edge from the technology point of view because I made special studies, so you know about that. And then I was really on the cutting edge, and uh, I'm curious always. And when I, when I look at something interesting, I go for it. And I went to CEO and said, uh, "This new technology we have to have in this company." Okay. And I started then um, Object Oriented Java, UML, and Stories, 1996, Sebastiano, and this was eights ago. And uh, before I talked about. Uh, AI project, that's déjà vu. For, for, for what I did 20 year, more than 20 years ago, building up a company in the company with business plan, everything, to put new technology in the concern and to get projects in Switzerland 23 uh, ages. So my déjà vu now is AI. I want to do it again. <laughs> now. If you were to choose, what would your dream project be? Have what? you ever thought about that? Yes, could I start? Please. Because that was <laughs> uh, just a coffee machine. Because I, I read the LinkedIn story about, about uh, 
frozen people, 100 years, Elon Musk, and I said to myself, now I know, I have a talk. I want to be uh, frozen for next 100 years, and then I will be the tennis player 165 years old. That's my favorite project. Okay, awesome. Sorry for that. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Maybe Alton will sponsor you. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, if I'm to continue, and we have already one ten tennis player, uh, just to make sure he's not playing alone, um, I'll have to, as you see, I'm wearing some wearables. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm always fascinated how we could use technology to make our life here more more efficient, more healthy, and so on. So I'll be really glad that uh, a combination of AI, uh, tracking technologies, um, right food, and right um, lifestyle would allow me, without being frozen, to live as long that I still play with him in 100 years. <laughs> okay, thank you. What about you? Is it also about living forever or...? No, no. I'm uh, more interested in the emerging countries and um, we know that uh, there are a lot of people there that um, they don't have our uh, standards of living. So, of course, they can't afford what we can actually afford. And I would like to work in a project, uh, in a fintech project, uh, involved in a new financial product for these people. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that is, that is impressive. Yes. For instance, that can, uh, I don't know, maybe they can uh, allow to the women to have uh, more access to the, to the credit in a more fastest way. There are already projects like this, but mm -hmm. I would like to see something really new, maybe with, uh, with an app or something like this. It would awesome. be really interesting. Thank you. Sebastiano? And just to mention uh, the Queen song, Who Wants to Live Forever? <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to live forever just because, uh, let's say, my, uh, my existence in this world, it's, uh, it's enough. Uh, I'm very interested in what you said, Veronica, just because, uh, um, in my opinion, uh, uh, there, is very, there is a real progress when the technology is for everyone. And for me, it's uh, very important. I would personally, I would like to, um, to work in a project that democratizes the technology, which means mm -hmm. uh, uh, try to help people to understand the technology, just to make it easier to use it. It would be, for me, it would be, just because I am in the sector, I, I, I started uh, uh, very soon, uh, in, just because I was six year old when I started to, uh, to programming, just because uh, I, I, I am not like uh, Yuri, I did not play, or Branko, I do not play uh, tennis or uh, I did not sport uh, <laughs> when I was a child and now the, the only thing I, I did was stay on the computer. That's, that's what the reason why I'm doing this, this job right now. And for me, uh, in the last 30 years, uh, the technology was uh, uh, two options. The, on one side it becomes uh, easier, but on the other side the new technology becomes, uh, let's say, uh, more complicated. Now we need uh, to simplify uh, the technology. Just because to connect what you said uh, before about DIE, every technology has potential uh, side effects. Uh, in the past, uh, we, uh, in the, during uh, the Industrial Revolution, uh, the, the first one, the second one, the third one, uh, a lot of people uh, lose their job. Okay, it's a uh, mm -hmm. It's common in the, when uh, a technology ar ar rise up, okay? Um, but now we need to allow every people in the world to be uh, able to, to create new business, to create new technologies. And we need to allow more people to have access to those in, in, in information. The IE high we talk about is just, uh, it's a lot of potential mm -hmm. um, to put in, in the products for our company, uh, for, for, sorry, for, 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 the, for, for the customer for our company. Uh, it's a great opportunity. So that's the, that I would do 
to see me in a, in a, in a couple of years. That's my, my idea. Nice, thank you. So if I understand right, all of you have in common that you want to widen accessibility of technology and it being assistant to human beings, to development and so on. Is that correct? Yes, technology, in my opinion, must be inclusive mm -hmm. yeah. and must be for everybody. Thank you. I've learned so much already. So now uh, we have discussed about your experiences and insight, but could you explain a bit more about how you got to Alton in the first place and how does the company accommodate your personal and professional goals? I should get, say it's very short. She's guilty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm guilty even for it. No, <laughs> <also for> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, also for me. I apologize. <laughs> How are you not in HR? <laughs> yeah, but more or less my job is HR related. <laughs> right. And does the company actually, or how does the company actually accommodate your goals, like also your personal ones, your professional ones? Thank you very much for this question, because with these guys mostly, now I know Sebastian as well, a little bit more people, uh, I'm happy to, uh, that they can give my experience, uh, that can help, and uh, then I uh, get kind of uh, appreciation about that. Okay, that was good sometimes, not always, but that's the reality. But uh, normally, I appreciate really uh, a good, a good uh, climate uh, in, in, in Alton, what I actually recognize, especially with uh, you guys here. And uh, I assume that's a climate which is actually everywhere at Alton. That's my assuming. Okay, thank you. How did you get to Alton? Well, um, after spending um, quite a while in the banking sector, I wanted to um, build up on my studies and uh, that was something related to technology and uh, transformation. And uh, right now I have the chance to actually be on the forefront of it and uh, understand how those organizations work. It kind of helps. If you work for banking, insurances or fintechs, you understand how their business models work, how their operations actually uh, move on, what are the challenges. Um, and um, at the moment, I'm actually trying to learn more from the people who are very much skilled in the area. And uh, there are no questions which are stupid questions. Um, and uh, sometimes they are able to explain to me something which otherwise will take me a long period of time. And another very positive point which I see is that um, we are able to have um, direct contact with the clients, obviously, but also with the consultants of Alton. So if we, um, for example, uh, need to tackle a certain project where we're not sure the skill set is quite unique and we are not um, able to understand what it should be, we could gather opinions from a number of people to actually build a puzzle uh, that in the end could help Alton to bring the best consultant to those companies, uh, which is one of the USPs of Alton, I would say. And um, on the personal level, um, there is a lot of things which are still undiscovered for me. So uh, there is Alton Academy, which is offering uh, courses uh, on a quarterly basis, which uh, could help me uh, to cover the gaps. Um, and uh, this is something very exciting in my view. Awesome. The whole time when you were explaining, it, it all seemed like puzzle pieces are coming together on all those levels. It's, it's amazing. I Great. hope so too. Thank you. What about you? Uh, for me, it's a little bit different story. I was working for an IT startup and uh, like after two years, I wanted to gain a more international experience in a bigger company. So I have applied to, to Alten Italy because I'm an Italian mother tongue. And during the selection process, uh, I told them that uh, my preference uh, would have been to go to an international environment and they proposed me why don't you work for Alton Switzerland and so I started to work between the Italian area and the, and the German area. Awesome and what is it that brings you value from like how does the company actually add to your, your growth? For sure, the climate that, uh, that here is, uh, is amazing. I have to say that I'm working with really special colleagues and the um, international environment. For me, it's extremely important because uh, it gives you a really different point of views. 
it forces you to be flexible and to see other kind of mindset that uh, in my opinion is one of the really it's really an added value awesome thank yeah. you sebastiano that's absolutely Please. true what uh, <laughs> veronica said uh, i think uh, working in in, uh, in alternate was amazing from from the beginning i am uh, probably one of the best uh, now, um, scenario, just because I started uh, as a senior developer in the bank industry, thanks to, to Veronica. Uh, then uh, I grew up in the company uh, to my uh, current uh, role, which is as a senior technical manager. And, uh, and for me, uh, staying in this company uh, is uh, like uh, now, uh, Yuri said before, it's, uh, it's combining perfectly what is uh, my personal life, my personal goal with the, uh, with the corporate goal? And, and this allowed me, for example, thanks to the, um, to the academy, to so Alton Academy, mm -hmm. to, um, to try to understand new, uh, sec new uh, area of knowledge, uh, which uh, was not in my, in my background. And for me, it's, it's, it's amazing. That's awesome. Are there other opportunities that you have received from Alton so far that actually has helped you grow? Yes, of course. Uh, for instance, I started as a junior business manager and now I'm coaching a team of a business manager. So I'm learning really a lot uh, from the perspective of team management and even how to let the talent of other people grow. And this, this is extremely interesting. Awesome. It's um, actually really helpful to get connected with a very diverse people mm -hmm. and um, the exposure is sometimes um, uh, not very long but it's always very um, powerful so you get a kind of an executive summary, right, if you talk uh, business, uh, executive summary of every person's job and what is he doing mm -hmm. and that's really interesting to understand the bigger picture in a way, back to the puzzle game. So um, in this sense I think Alton is really um, able to connect very diverse industries. Uh, as we started this podcast, you mentioned all the industries Alton is dealing with, and we are only only covering the IT in the banking and fintech, but there are many other colleagues who have very different background, uh, who switched having natural talent from industry A to N industry B, and that's always a great exchange to have those people, and not just people from one specific area. This is a great enrichment in my view. Great, thank you. Yeah, that's Sebastiana? absolutely true. Just for, for me, it was very uh, interesting to be, uh, to be uh, involved in projects uh, from other divisions, from IT sector, but also from life sciences and from engineering. It, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting to, to connect to people with the other uh, mindset, other expertise, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, our area of knowledge, but also uh, age, uh, culture, uh, this is uh, this is something that uh, reach you out. No, mm -hmm. it's absolutely great. And this is happens uh, even at the business manager levels, because uh, we work uh, uh, with uh, our colleagues of uh, engineering, life science as well. So not only for the technical professionals like Sebastiano, but even like for professionals like me and Yuri that are more operating in the, in the business. And it's extremely interesting. I can imagine that. It, seems, it, it sounds like this, this very necessary transfer of knowledge is happening in, in all directions. Like uh, what you say adds so much value that the transformation of your whole experiences and knowledge and the interaction with, with younger co-workers and colleagues and then also like the lateral uh, way. It's, yeah, really nice. Thank you so much. Yes, please, Veronica. Yes, I'm sorry, I would like even to highlight uh, another aspect that uh, as uh, Yuri correctly said, uh, we, we have a, a direct relationship with the customer mm -hmm. and uh, with our consultants like, uh, like Branco. And this is amazing because you have the chance uh, to work really close with great professionals and learn uh, really a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. One last thing. Do you have any tips for anyone who is looking to evolve as a professional in the sector? 
from my experience, I can say, guys, uh, go out from your comfort zone and uh, um, take risk. When I left my previous job, uh, I had, let's say, a good position, my, my salary, I, I couldn't stay there forever. But I wanted something more. As uh, Yuri said, I wanted to make an impact, so I decided to to take my risk and uh, and go to Halton and uh, and test myself. Awesome. Yeah, probably uh, Veronica will say, uh, take risk, uh, exit to the to the comfort zone. Uh, the technology is amazing, so there's a lot to, to learn. There's a lot to to, uh, to experience. Uh, Alten is uh, for me one of the most company to work for, just because uh, allows you to uh, allow you to to have those opportunities. And this is uh, there are a lot of opportunities in our company in uh, um, in Europe, in US, in uh, in India, uh, and so on worldwide. And uh, so there's no excuse you no know, to remain in the comfort zone. Thank you. Think big and do what you like. Think big, really. do what you like. Go on, thank you, Branko. Yuri. Well, to just sum up, uh, because pretty much all the points were already raised, um, I think it's really important um, for our generation of people who are um, having to adjust our skill set um, every three, five years. So staying in the comfort zone would eventually not help in the long term, uh, as we said before. And um, the more you get exposure to the new um, challenges and new technologies, um, the better you prepare yourself for the for the future, which is inevitable, right? And uh, just like Branko is uh, glad to be working on something which right now is becoming very trendy, uh, you may dream big um, and actually one day you'll be working on a product which will re revolutionize the world. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, once again. I think this was a really great and insightful conversation. I wish we had more time. For all of our listeners, you can go and check out Alton's international uh, LinkedIn channels for Sweden, Belgium, Switzerland, Finland, the Netherlands, Denmark and Portugal, or visit our website www.alton.com. Go and learn more. See you next time. <laughs>